The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. From TFNN, welcome to the May 9th, the terrific Thursday, maybe it's going to be turnaround Thursday edition of today's Trader's Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely loves being with you. And the key here, kind of got off track here. Sorry, I was multitasking there. But the, uh, uh, look, the, the key to life, it's just not being a prisoner of your past. It's about being a pioneer of your future. Hey, I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but more importantly, I'm here to serve you today. So feel free to pick up that phone and dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, uh, just simply send me an email, uh, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, <coughs> excuse me, just put radio show question, of course, in our Tiger's Den. Any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, the Dow off 163 points. That's down six-tenths of a percent. Trade down at 25,802. S&P's off about 12 points, or about four-tenths of a percent to the downside. NASDAQ off a half a percent. That's 40 points. She's trading at 75,76. So it's mean and red across the board, with the exception of the spot volatility. Index. That's up 17 pennies, 1957, uh, well off of its highs. Gold is up three 50 silver is down eight pennies. Leading the charts, the upside, you've got Roku up 17 bucks or 26%. BioRad Labs up $17 as well. That's a little over 5%. Uh, Copa Cabana Holdings, that's up 15%. Uh, Mercado Libre up 2%. That's nearly $12. To the downside, stamps.com getting cut in half. I mean half, I mean 53%. 11 million shares behind that move. That's trading out at 38.50. The trade desk down. Nearly 11 percent, or 24 bucks. Booking holdings off 10. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, 20. That's a little over 1 percent. Amazon off 17. Look, let's start the day here by just simply responding to a question that came in earlier. This coming in about 11 o'clock from uh, Craig, Craig E. And uh, Craig is um, just simply taking a look at a, a put, either a spread. I can't. He, but he's, he wants us to go ahead and take a look at caterpillar so let's take a look at the uh, cat out here and let's do it like we always do let's start off with our three different time frames meaning daily weekly and monthly and let's just understand what caterpillar is doing from a market profile perspective it's below the daily bottom of its box 138.83 we can see it's made its way back just on this screen here back to a prior bottom back to a prior swing point it's held thus far don't know if today's hammer session if today's, if today's candle session will be a hammer, it's certainly going to at least be a get. Well, can't say that. I don't know how it's going to end. Presently, we have both a hammer candle and a gap to the downside. So you got a bearish and a bullish signal out here. We'll go take a look at that, try to figure that one out. Inside the weekly time frame out here, price is just sitting right at its point of control. On a weekly basis, the level where both buyers and sellers believe there is fair value for this stock. On a monthly time frame, it's a bearish structured profile. This says over time, this could easily pull back to 111 to 113. But you are looking for something through uh, expiration next week on Friday. So let's take a look at our other charts out here. My uh, Ninja Trader charts that have several other tools. And so, Craig, here in looking at this trade, there's a couple things we know. As I'd mentioned, we could see the gap to the downside today, but we can also see that this is a hammer candle. It's always hard to determine, is this a bullish or bearish message out here? So what I look for is I look for the pattern. I also look to see where is support on the left-hand side of the chart. And what we can see here is there was a, uh, 
A nice little piercing, bullish reversal, signal piercing candle back here on March 25th. That tells us that in this area, you have previously had buyers identifying this level, uh, as I say, level of support. We also had a TD set up nine count that called the high right to the T on February 25th. That set up this support trend line. If I move it all the way further to the right out here, which is certainly applicable, we can see that price is also pulled back to support, generating the hammer candle. What's the pattern out here? Well, as we speak right now, you have an A to B equals CD to the downside. And here's how I would call this. If, in fact, at the end of the day, this is a hammer candle or it's some other type of bullish reversal candle, uh, then this is telling you that it's going to move higher, that it has found a bottom. It found a bottom previously at this level. That's if it's a hammer candle. We also know that Stevie's green line turned red two bars ago. What typically happens? What's the phenomena associated with Stevie's line turning colors? Exactly. It says that price and that line are going to catch up to each other. Well, if this ends up being a bullish reversal candle, it would suggest a price move up towards that 136.68 level. The reason I say towards is because that line is going to move lower, most likely. Well, price is moving higher, so well, just simply, if you, if you have the line on the tool, it becomes easy. But if you're asking me and you're in the money already here on a put trade, you don't have really much of a description here, that's fine. Uh, all you need to know is if you see some type of bullish reversal candle today, it is signaling to you that a Caterpillar has formed a bottom. That's always going to be, the patterns are going to be a leading indicator to profiles out here. But it's not that profiles aren't valuable. From a weekly time frame, if you had more time, I don't really see anything that interesting out here other than prices back to support. So this could support um, a, a bottom, a pullback bottom out here. Uh, <clears throat> but, and if I look at the monthly, there's nothing exciting here. So in other words, on a monthly base, let's put this chart over on our screen long term, not until price closes above Stevie's red or green line, in this case here, it would be green line at 143.76. Would I really be interested in Caterpillar from a longer term trade standpoint? All you have to do is look at my green and red line. If you just simply use that one tool, which you wouldn't, you'd use the nine setup out here. Why? On a monthly basis, it identified the high all the way back here in in um, July of, uh, when is that? July of uh, 2014? Yeah, July of 2014. And then it called the high out here from a Caterpillar standpoint in January of 2018. So you wouldn't ignore those patterns, nor would it. And, and this is going to always be in both, not always, but it's certainly more bullish when price is trading above Stevie's red or green line. Those are not the conditions. Nonetheless, be careful. Did I really close that out? I hope not. But if I did, oh, there we go. We're back in place. So uh, I hope that helps you out with regard to uh, that trade, that trade being Caterpillar. And that was Craig from uh, St. Petersburg, Russia. Uh, I think it was St. Petersburg, Florida. All right. So now let's go back to the markets while well, we haven't begun. But let's go back to the markets. Let's take a look around, see what we can uh, figure out here. So right now, as of 114 in the afternoon, Dow's off 157 points. What is it doing? Well, let's also go take a look at its daily time frame chart out here. Let's pull over the Dow Equity Futures contract. You knew I was going to do that. We don't have a hammer candle yet. I don't know at the end of the day session. We're well off the highs. Hasn't created a hammer candle. Uh, we have made the 1 to at least 1.6. When it almost 1 to 2, A to B equals CD to the downside out here. We can see that price on a daily basis trading back into the hammer candle that formed back in March. Could be a bottom is what the daily time frame charts. Watch today. See if you get a bullish reversal candle. If you do... Give a second thought to being short the indices. We'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Dow off 183, S&P 13. Russell 2000 off six points. Uh, and that leads us into this uh, next question here coming from Alex. Alex writes in, hey, Steve, I got a fill on TNA at 61.20, sold at 64.23 bucks. Did I sell too soon? Hey, you can never sell too soon when you take profits out there. But is the question, will the uh, Russell 2000 head higher out here? Well, let's try to answer that question for Alex. Let's first, Alex, try to understand what the uh, Russell 2000 equity futures contract is doing. Here's what we know as of uh, 118 in the afternoon. Price has come down and tested and rejected, rejected the bottom of its daily profile. The bottom of its daily profile is 15.6090. If we get a close above that, well, there's nothing wrong with the Russell 2000. What else do we know? We know the Russell 2000 equity futures contract is trading in a sideways consolidation. Tried to break out. It tried that for two days. Said, eh, I don't actually like the temperature up here. Now that it's below or it's with inside the consolidation, uh, it's possible that price is going to run down to the bottom of that consolidation or the 1497 area. So kind of be specific here, Steve. Well, first of all, it's a daily time frame chart we are looking at. If price closed below 15, 16, 90, the answer to your question would be, I would say, no, you didn't sell too early. I would say at that stage, price may take a spin, a ride on the reading down to 1497. If it holds 15, 16, 90, well, maybe the answer to your question would be yes. Let's continue looking on. We just wanted to take a look at what was going on in the daily time frame just to give some perspective. But let's give it some additional perspective out here. Take a look at the daily time frame for the Russell 2000. Do we have any kind of reversal signal? Well, with inside the consolidation pattern, as you can see, what we have as we speak right now at 120 is a hammer candle. I do not know whether this will be a hammer candle at the end of the trading day or not. I don't have any other pattern out there. I prefer to use bullish and bearish reversal candles when there are patterns. 
Now, the only pattern that you and I can spot out here is that the last time that price was testing this swing point area, April 22nd, you had the cavalry or the bulls show up on April 23rd. So this is a price area that appears to want to be defended out here. Um, and if you see a hammer candle today, it just tells you about that strong defense. In the longer term, the Russell 2000 remains inside that consolidation pattern. Again, the daily time frame not really providing you and I with a great signal there. So what is giving us a great signal? Well, I don't think it's a 30-minute chart. I don't think any of the 30-minute time frame charts, oh, I take that back, slap me in the face, slap me till I'm silly, I take that back. If we take a look at the Russell 2000, the 30-minute time frame chart, what we're going to see here is uh, when it did bounce, its most recent bounce, back at 4 o'clock a couple of days ago, um, was it a couple days ago? This is the 30-minute chart. This was on... On the 7th, yeah, so a couple days ago. And then you got that price move up until about 3.30, 4.30, that is, in the morning out here, uh, 4.30 in the morning, that's on May the 8th. Yesterday, and then price has moved down ever since. Well, if we start our wave count from that level, the high at 4.30 in the morning, yesterday, well, it turns out that wave number 7, Stevie Wonder, singing in the key of G, uh, took place at 10.30 this morning. Now, in order for the Russell 2000 to give you, on a 30-minute basis, a change in trend, we're going to need to see it close above that TDST at resistance line. That is the trading session from 7.30 in the evening, May 8th. The high there is 1579.80. So the only way to say that you would have sold it too soon would be a close above that level. That's what the 30-minute time frame shows us at this stage of the game. How about an hourly time frame? We're just doing this this way. We can uh, kind of uh, move through the process of understanding what the markets are communicating to you and I. I don't see any kind of bullish reversal signal here on a one-hour time frame, and I see price just simply bouncing up to resistance, the top of the 60-minute profile. If we take a look at the two-hour time frame chart, the two-hour time frame chart, or 120-minute, perhaps providing us with the best of signals thus far, or adding to the 30-minute signal. What do we know about it? We know that as it has thus far bottomed, it did it with a TD setup nine count that was exactly at noon. Now what Price is trying to do is take on Stevie's red line. It's at about 25,748 is what it looks like. Uh, but in order for, uh, is this, in order for this to suggest, this is the, I got to the Dow. How did I do the Dow? We were looking at the Russell 2000, I thought. We were looking at the Russell 2000. I have to apologize for that. I somehow went over to the right. It slapped me again. Slap me again. In any event, let me pull over the two-hour time frame chart for the Russell. Do I see anything here? No, I don't, other than an A to B equals CD, but I, I don't see anything here. <clears throat> Look, I don't want to be wishy-washy unless I have to be wishy-washy. Um, I'm going to have to just go with, you know, you made a great trade. You made some money out here. Um, as much as I'd like to be able to tell you that there is a, a bottom that's in place, uh, it's been a nice bounce so far, but I don't see the type of bottoming signals you would typically see, meaning you would see them in the short-term time frame chart first, 30 minutes. Uh, we did with wave number G, but we didn't see that in the ES, the NQ, and the YEM. And uh, it's too early to say that you sold that too soon out there. So uh, that's the best that I can uh, do uh, for you in trying to answer your question out there. So maybe that's not going to help. Uh, but uh, just uh, let me just give you a virtual, we can do that, a virtual pat on the back for a nice trade. So then, all right, Steve, well, then well, what the heck are you, well, why should I even listen to your show if you tell me today you can't tell me one way or the other? One thing I can share with you one way or the other would be the following things. Take a look at that oversold, as we speak, at 124 in the afternoon, reading inside the advanced decline oscillator. It's down below minus 150. We're at minus 159.09. An end-of-day closing is really uh, important. You go back, you take a look at the advanced decline oscillator reading. When it gets down below 150, you find out how often it forms bottoms out there. Remember, this is a game, <clears throat> you and I, <clears throat> we're taking a look at a stock chart. We could really give a hoot 
or rats anything about what goes on on the screen and the media and this and that and tweets and twits and, you know, all of that type of stuff. Instead, what you and I do is we rely on reading the message of the markets because when we look at any one chart, it's telling us what the emotion, the human emotion of the market is at this point in time for traders around the world uh, that uh, utilize the uh, New York Stock Exchange, which is really a basket of all those stocks out there. So we're seeing what the summarized version of those stocks look like out here. And we look for turning signals. So this tells you and I, bouncer bottom <clears throat> is going to form out here. Doesn't tell us at what hour of the day and at one time. It's just when it gets down below minus 150. Don't ignore it, please, or ignore it at your own peril. If we take a look at the spot volatility index, Kevin S. had sent in an email earlier. I had responded back to him, and he said, hey, good point on the fact that the spot volatility index is trading well above all of its futures contract. I went back. I looked at the charts. I could see the bottoms. Do you think it's going to happen this time, too? And what do you think our answer is there? Absolutely. This, as you and I talked uh, talked about yesterday. It's out of whack. It's way out of whack. Futures traders don't see the volatility that the folks have seen this week. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com.
Welcome back, uh, first. Uh, welcome back, first. Welcome back, folks. Uh, first thing I want to do is uh, Jay writes in and said, uh, but isn't that normal, Steve? The long term should be lagging indicator on the spot volatility index. And in case you just tuned in now, uh, what we're looking at here, what Jay's referring to, is we're taking a look at the short term, the 30 day. Uh, volatility index out here. It's trading right now in 1949. And, and Jay, what you can see is that this is priced above all of the futures contracts, whether it's May, June, July. And even though what you say is a valid point out here, instead what I was trying to be able to share with you and everyone else out here is that another cool tool or use of the spot volatility index is when it gets out of whack like that. And when it gets out of whack like that, here is taking a look at the spot fix and looking at its six-month contract. We could go look at the six month, the three month, the one year um, out here. And what you will notice is that when that ratio gets above one, that's the green line on my chart out here, it puts in either great bounce or bottom areas. Eventually, it's a bottom area, uh, but sometimes it uh, turns out to be bounce, just like we had during this little consolidation period inside of the um, S&P 500 back between October and really the early part of December in 2018. But if you go back and you have these tools, you will see, and I can't explain to you the reason why, I just know that it is. Um, and then what I also know, though, is that in utilizing this, Jay, what we need to really see is some type of uh, bottoming pattern uh, inside the S&P uh, specifically. And so if we look at the ES Mini, for example, right now, in the case of the ES Mini, um, I don't know what the end of the day's trading signal will be or bar that forms inside the ES Mini. It may or it may be a hammer candle. If it is, then you've got an A to B equals CD to the downside that suggests, okay, we've got a, a bottom out there. Now, we'd want to see where prices trading in relationship to market profiles and so forth. But today's signal will be important for the ES. But if we don't get a bullish reversal signal out here, then on a daily perspective, it's not signaling that it has found a bottom. If anything, what it would be. And so what we just looked at there, Jay, was, uh, OK, we know that this is out of whack, out of whack, spot volatile index and its futures contract. And, uh, and, and it will get back in line out here. And that's where you can see these vicious, depending on what word you want to use, counter trend rallies, large counter trend rallies or bottoms. Um, so what you want to do is put the patterns, which we don't have in place right now, inside the ES Mini on a daily time frame. Now, I'd be willing to to um, um, to forego the daily time frame first if I could take a look at a shorter term time frame, like a 30 minute and see a valid pattern here. Now, I could put in an A to B equals CD. There's been plenty of those to the uh, downside out here. Instead, I would just simply say, you know what? OK, I can do that. But Jay, if price can close above this uh, solid green line, that price point is 288550 uh, then that's going to signal to us in the short term that the, it generated a change in trend. Now, it's a heck of a bounce off the bottom to give you that signal. But otherwise, up until that point in time, I would classify everything as a counter trend move at this stage. Now, why is it that we could also see a bottom out here? Well, if we take a look at the uh, daily time frame, you can see prices flirting with Stevie's green line. Now, remember we looked at Caterpillar, I think it was Caterpillar or, or something where price was, uh, that, 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 it was that, that we saw the line turn colors. I don't remember if it was green to red. This one is red to green. And what's the phenomena that we know is going to take place at some point in time when that occurs? Price and that line are going to catch up to each other. And that's what we have going on right now. And this could be could be a bullish test. If at the end of the day tomorrow, price is trading at or above this level, uh, that would be a bullish test considering we had an intraday push lower. I don't know what tomorrow is going to look like. I just know that if you did get a close above this, well, that's a bottoming signal. If you close right here, this little the current eight count that is in place is going to go away or the nine count, I should say, that'll go away because this would be, it needs to close above the high of this third bar out here, which is right around the 28.95 level. Um, and if that's the case, then I don't have any topping signal, so to speak, inside the uh, ES Mini, other than getting back to a previous high and uh, selling off, but selling off to where? Selling off to support. Um, and it's not just the ES Mini that so far has been a test of support as of 1.35 in the afternoon on Tuesday. It's the same inside the NQ, 
we could see that so far its line had turned from red to green. Eventually, you're going to get that test. Well, we've gotten that test now, uh, and a rejection of that is bullish. That's my reading. You don't have to read it that way, whoever you are. Uh, the Dow is a totally different animal out here because the Dow is trading below Stevie's green line, right? It's trading below 26.130. So I can't make heads or tails of the uh, Dow other than I know we're in a consolidation and shoot, price can pull all the way back down to the bottom of that consolidation. But that's not the call that we're making just yet. And uh, on the um, and on the weekly time frame chart, what we can see is that it was just three weeks ago when the Russell 2000s, and we know the Russell 2000 hasn't made its way back anywhere near its all-time high out here, but its red line turned green just three weeks ago, Jay. And right now what you're getting is the bullish test of that. First is the anticipation when you see the line change colors. Look, the line change color in the Russell 2000 on a weekly basis back here on November 16th. OK, price did what on the week of December 7th? Bounced right up to that level, tested it, rejected it. And of course, price, that was the bearish uh, case out here. What happens if price closes below that and Stevie's line is green? Well, what happens is it's still a the market on a weekly basis would still be considered bullish. Uh, because it still has a price oscillator above zero, but it would suggest a further decline out here. So three of the four, as we speak, at 1.30 in the afternoon, from a weekly perspective, have done what they were supposed to do, which at this stage is the bullish test of a market move higher out there. So if that's the case, you put that together with the way the spot volatility index its futures contracts are trading out there. We still need more signals. And we had already taken a look at the minus 150 level inside the New York Stock Exchange. So all I'm saying to everybody that's listening out there is just pay attention to these signals. They have meaning. Let's not get caught up into the to the 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 the, the news and the, the let's just let's just simply trade from the let's read the charts let's read from the charts you will see me i believe you will be me be me or see me be consistent with regard to what happens when the line turns from red to green or green to red out there and then you and i go look at it and what do you do when you get to a nine count out there and you're in day number eight and do you pay attention and most certainly when price moving higher doing less relative energy or lower with less relative energy and the importance of those bullish or bearish reversal candles and the reason why it's important to wait till the end of the day on the Russell 2000 or all the equity futures contracts see if they've got hammer candles was there a pattern that had completed out there and all those things will go into assisting you in being able to make better market calls. So right now, what do we have? Well, we've got the NQ. It's tested the bottom of its weekly profile. That was 75.17. Well off of that, that was support. It was a bullish structured weekly profile. What happened in the ES Mini? Tested the bottom of its weekly profile, 28.58. It's trading above that, and it has held. And the Russell 2000, as we know, has tested the bottom of its daily profile. Support, support, support. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. That was off 160 S&P down 11. Uh, Jeff writes in and asks if I could explain the TD nine count series. Let me do it like this. Let me take a clean chart for you, Jeff. Uh, first, it's a, a tool. It's a set of tools that were created by Tom DeMarc. That's why the TD out there. Uh, let me choose gold. We haven't looked at gold yet, so let me just pull up in the gold chart see here if this helps you and I out at all well I know it'll help us out because we've got the accounts on here but let's look at a 30 minute time frame chart for gold now um, the Tom DeMarc has got a, a number of really great tools and indicators I've chosen this one because of how well it works and how easy it is actually to explain versus some of his other count systems like sequential or combo and and a number of other tools that are out there but if you've got an interest go pick up his books they're uh, really uh, thorough reads make sure you don't have a glass of wine near your side when you're reading it uh, and uh, read it about uh, 50 times and 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 maybe uh, and, but in any event great great book out there but here's here's let me let me get right to it it's like um, picture Again, this is the set of emotions. When we look at any time frame chart, we're looking at the set of emotions of traders during this time period here. And on runs to the upside, momentum runs to the upside, and momentum runs to the downside, what we will typically see, it's kind of like the marathon that's being run here, even if it's on a 30-minute time frame chart. Um, you'll see that bottoms, that we can see two bottoms that have formed out here, uh, ideally with um, in gold with his TD setup nine count, three of them. Let's take a look at them. Let's start from left to right. First of all, Jeff, what you have, you're looking for, you're looking for the close of each bar and comparing it to the close of the bar four bars earlier. In a run to the downside, here my count bar number one was when we had the first instance of a close below a bar four bars earlier. As long as there's nine successive, successive counts, that's what creates the pattern. Now, the interesting thing about the pattern is that, in this case here, if a bottom is going to form, it will usually do it on bar 8, 9, or the bar following bar 9 out there. In this case here, it was right on bar number 9. Right on bar number 9. Now, as it made that move to the downside, it set up a resistance line. 
That resistance line Stevie has painted in green. Makes the nine count back here. Let me get my crosshair out here. Makes the nine count. This is at 10 o'clock in the morning. This will help all intraday traders, anybody out here. Um, it works for all time frames. So, you know, but anyways, makes that low at 10 o'clock in the morning. That is May the 6th. Now, if you use that as a trade signal, then you said, I'm going long, and I'm going to ask you the question, where is it you're going to exit your trade? And this is what it would have looked like back then. It would have looked just like this. That As soon as that bar number nine gets created, the uh, green line automatically forms on my system. And if you'd entered that trade right around here, 1280, you know, 1279, your intraday trader, and I was going to ask where are you going to exit the trade, you would have known you're going to exit that trade or look to exit that trade right at where that green resistance line is. That formed at 6 o'clock in the morning. That was at 1283.90. We pulled this chart forward. Where did price find resistance? Right at that green line. Why? Because when you do this nine count out here, it's the beginning of a, uh, a huge momentum move. Or said another way, it was the beginning of a breakdown. It was the breakdown. Or it could be the break out break up to the other side. And so price, all it did was it got back to the break down area. Again, I don't know how this works. I just know that it works out here. Does it work all the time? Absolutely not. Hey, look at this nine count top out here that formed at 1130 and it made a move uh, lower out here. Now, I've erased the lines. I just have the last two. You know, I could decorate this chart with as many lines as I want out here. But here's another nine count top to make you wear if you're trading an instrument intraday and you're looking for signals out here. Um, here, if we take a look at this most recent run lower, it formed its bottom. This is gold on the bar following bar number nine. It did that right here. This was at 1330 uh, in the afternoon on May the 8th out here. When it actually topped out during that run, it was the bar following bar nine right here at 430 in the morning. Remember that bar nine uh, out there where we get the top at 430 in the morning. This is that ninth bar forms this red horizontal support line forms. So what happened this morning at 10 o'clock? What happened at basically at 8.30 this morning? For those of you that trade uh, gold and, and maybe you look at a 30-minute chart out here, what did price do? It came right back to where price broke out. Is it really any wonder that, uh, that we didn't see price bounce off of uh, that level out here? Not that I can see. So, Jeff, this is the TD setup nine count at work. It works for all time frames out here, all time frames, 30-minute, 2-minute, hourly, daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly. Um, and so it's a, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, I consider it to be a very cool tool. So that is courtesy of Tom Newark. Jeff, thanks for writing in. I hope that answers your question with regard to what the TD setup nine count is. No other questions out there, none inside the tiger's den. In essence, we kind of covered gold, uh, didn't we? Did we cover gold? Uh, well, we just covered it from a uh, from a, a short-term time frame. If we take a look at gold, just on the daily basis, 1285, not really that interesting out here. Um, not won't be interesting. Will not be interesting to Jay. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jay. It will not be interesting to Jay until he sees price close above this down trend line out here. Otherwise, all we have for gold, it's pretty simple. It's trading in a consolidation. That consolidation pattern basically looks like this. And so you've got a measured move breakout, uh, 1268 to 1290. So you've got uh, basically, what, 22 buckaroonies out here. Whichever way price breaks through the consolidation, should it break, close above, close below, you're looking at about a $22 move, at least a $22 move. That's how the consolidation patterns work. So gold just trading in a sideways consolidation, not a whole lot of, not, not really interesting out here for uh, Stevie. Um, if you take a look at the GDX, I'm sure someone has a question about that. If we go answer the GDX question out here, what are we going to see? The GDX question we're going to see really not interesting either. Right now, trading right at Stevie's red line, right at Stevie's red line. You never like to see my line turn red and price below it because then you've got a falling price oscillator below zero. So the GDX is also not very enthused by the price action inside of uh, Goldilocks. So be careful uh, there. 
So we're seeing a, a fairly decent move here in the last few minutes. Um, move to the upside. Um, hammer candles abound, but it's only 149 in the afternoon. It's the two-hour time frame charts that were consistent inside the ES, the NQ, and the uh, Dow with regard to signals, with regard to pattern signals. So it's probably those time frame charts uh, that uh, you will want to pay attention to to help you read the message of the market. What is it that I was referring to? Remember, Jeff, to ask about that uh, TD setup nine count. Well, here's a two hour time frame chart for the ES Mini. When did it bottom? The bar after bar number nine out there. And now it's created. It was price was moving lower, doing this relative energy, less relative energy, and you've got this big old bullish engulfing candle. Here's the way you're going to know what's going to go on. If you see price close over that TDST resistance line, that's where you think the counter trend rally should peter out. That's at 28.88.25 out there. And that's true. And a close above it says we may have a change in trend in place out here. Steve Roach with TFN. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of tfnn.com don't let gold's next big run pass you by sign up today you know what's cool taking something that's good for you something specifically formulated to help with weight loss better sleep stress reduction and the need to detox nico our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment but today our food sources no longer contain the vitamins minerals and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong that's why we need primal edge daily nutrition it includes a special blend of ionic soil-based vitamins minerals fatty and amino acids in an easy to use liquid form primal edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, two-minute uh, countdown here. Beverly asked if we could take a look at uh, Facebook uh, for her. So let's go do that. Ticker symbol is FB. And as we take a look at uh, Facebook, what we're going to see that it has done so far today, 
Uh, Beverly, it's uh, pulling back to the top of its daily profile, 185.80. The low today so far is uh, 186.26. So from this chart perspective, the daily chart perspective, it remains bullish. If we look at the weekly chart, well above its uh, weekly profile, top of the box, 154.91. However, price is trading into potential resistance longer term. The longer term resistance as it uh, uh, is the top, excuse me, of its monthly box, 199.50. The high so far this month, 196.18. Last month, we saw a print of 198.48. So longer term, a resistance level that you're going to like to see, want to see price close above from uh, a long-term standpoint. On the daily chart, using my other system, uh, is there any other signals out here? The answer is there's not on the daily time frame. Do I have a topping signal out here? Um, I don't per se, but let's do the wave count. Well, I take that back. If we do our wave counts from the uh, low on March 18th, you get to wave number seven. That's letter number G that identified the top. It's why we pay attention to those patterns out here. Now, the question is, is there anything to the downside? You're going to have to rely upon that profile level of 185.80. If price closes inside there, Bev, that says price could pull back to 179.45. Do you have anything to worry about? Well, uh, look at the high so far that we've seen out here inside of Facebook on a weekly basis. Two weeks ago, TD set up number eight, bar number eight. Last week, number nine. That count is in place out here. That says should things really get wild inside Facebook, look for it to pull back into the 160 level. So you do have a topping signal in the weekly. You've got one in the daily. You do not have one inside of the monthly, except, well, we really did have a topping signal inside the monthly, didn't we? Not a signal so much, but resistance at 199.50 out here. So Facebook still looks pretty good. It'll look less good if we close below 185.80. So, folks, thanks so much for being here. Stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear, David White's up next. After that, Tom O'Brien. I'll be back with you on Fun Day, Friday. Have a nice Thursday.